what's happening guys welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and on today's episode we have the new Ghost 212cc racing engine from Harbor Freight. Uh, now Ghost is a proper name for it because she's been a ghost all over the internet and someone leaked a photo of it a couple weeks ago and got all the go-kart people raving about it so uh, we're here to tell you the specs on it we're going to slap it on one of our Trailmaster mini bikes and go give it a rip see what it'll rev to it's supposed to rev to 6,000 rpms out of the box so uh, we're going to give that a test uh, this was designed around kart racing, asphalt racing. That's what this whole engine was driven behind. There is an accessory kit we're going to talk about in a different video uh, that is fully designed for a race kart chassis. We're going to be using this, like I said, on a mini bike, so we won't need that accessory kit because uh, it wouldn't work for that setup anyways. So let's get this thing unboxed. Let's talk about real quick packaging. Of course, it's a smaller box because it does not have a gas tank or exhaust in the packaging with just the engine. The only thing you're going to get is a carburetor. Not even an air filter comes with this. So be in mind, if you buy this from the store, you're going to have to have a few extra parts to be able to actually use it. It does have a 70 millimeter bore, has a 55 millimeter stroke, eight and a half to one compression, about your standard specs for a 212cc engine. Uh, so nothing different there. It's not like a 224 where we have a stroker set inside the block. This is just gonna be a basically hotter cam and a 6,000 RPM governor set by the coil. So it's digitally uh, governored. So that means if you wanted to go with a 308 cam later and rev this puppy to nine grand, you're gonna have to swap out to a stock style coil that'll let you rev that far. So just keep that in mind. Uh, out of the box, it's gonna be 6,000 RPM governor. So for price on this engine, it's gonna launch at $299, so $300. So we're gonna talk about what you're getting for that price. And we're also going to compare it to what you would get if you did this with, let's say, just a 212 off the shelf engine. Uh, what the difference, if you did these parts to it, would you be better off buying a 212? And this is more, again, designed around the racing car world. So uh, I would imagine they're trying to get a regulated race for Ghost engine, just like the Briggs 206 and stuff. That's what they're going after here. That's the whole, uh, you know, has a picture of a race car on the friggin' box. So let's uh, cut this puppy open, see what we got. We've got racing, racing tape on it. So pretty basic unboxing. You get an oil funnel, of course the owner's manual, and a spark plug socket wrench tool. So first looks on this thing, uh, the first thing I can notice is the valve cover. Everybody's gonna see that right out of the box. This is not your standard uh, Hemi valve cover. They're normally a cast rectangle shape. So this block is made by Ducar, just like their 224. So same factory that the 224 is coming out of. Uh, it's got a hemispheric head and it's got some of this different style heat shielding. You got a plate here where I assume that you can mount your pulse pump if you're you know, needing a pulse pump. Again, what we're using it for today is a mini bike, so we're not gonna need that. We have gravity fed, we have a Go Power Sport Super Pipe on there, so we're not gonna need an exhaust or anything. We can just slap it on the frame as it is. Uh, you do have a, what looks to be a steel intake, which is different. Uh, normally they're aluminum and with the aluminum ones you can normally get a little bit bigger port size out of aluminum because it's machined out of a solid block where this is a fabricated intake. Uh, it's got a round side carb with a manual choke of course. So this is a PZ22 carburetor uh, for you people that know these round slides. It's a decent carb. If you start to go at bigger cam size, you're gonna to wanna to go with a bigger carb. My favorite carb use on these hands down is a 24 millimeter flat slide, uh, but this is probably gonna be pretty, pretty good right out of the box on this setup. But if you do go bigger cam, higher RPMs, you're gonna want that bigger carb. You've got a top fill oil. That's a little different. And this is for, again, the karting world, the race kart world. You got a top oil fill, and then your standard two bottom ones. Say we pull the side cover off real quick and take a look at the flywheel setup because this is a 6,000 RPM engine. Like I said, it's digitally governed through the coil. Of course, since it is a race kart engine, there's no oil sensor. On the back of it does have your normal on and off. Um, I'm curious of where they want you to run the pulse pump off of. I was just looking at that. But uh, we'll show you the valve train real quick and what's behind the flywheel fan trail. So 
So they're going with a cast flywheel. Looks like it's a little bit better quality and machined a little finer than your normal cast flywheel. But uh, all in all, looks like a pretty standard setup. You can tell this coil is governed uh, inside like a digital coil because it's so much fatter. But it looks like you should be able to just swap this right out with a standard coil if you wanted to get past that 6,000 RPM uh, limit. Let's say you did want to build this even further in the future, uh, which we have a full all out build coming out on this engine. Uh, we're definitely going to be replacing this flywheel with a billet flywheel. Uh, I don't trust any cast flywheel in super high RPMs. So uh, with the coil, you are going to have to go to a billet flywheel just for safety, just to know that you have quality, super high quality parts on there. You're revving something that far. That's a hunk of steel that could bust. And we actually have an engine sitting in the shop that that happened to and it blew part of the block off and everything. So it's super dangerous, but this is not the same block as the 224. The 224 is the strongest of the small blocks. The 224 Predator, 225 CC uh, Tillotson, those are the strongest blocks. This is a basic style, like 196 block that it doesn't have the extra casting in it, just to let you guys know. So it's not the same exact block as the 224, but it is made in the same factory. You can see they did a big heat shield and this basically having this plastic in between the intake is going to help keep heat from moving from your head into your manifold and uh you know it makes a little bit more power so we're going to go ahead and throw this back on and then pull the valve cover so we're going to pull this valve cover so i'm going to get rid of the spark plug wires a little different it's got a low profile boot instead of the large like industrial style that a 212 would normally have was on there so again just like a normal Ducar uh, Hemi head it's got the big rockers in it so yeah pretty decent design it's supposed to have a little heavier valve springs of course because if you are revving a 6,000 rpms right out of the box the stock so if you had a 212 predator and you wanted to rev the 6,000 rpms number one you're going to want to do a flywheel number two you want to do at least 18 pound valve springs so this is going to come with i don't know the exact spring pressure that the valve springs has but i know it has been equipped so i would assume around 18 to 20 pound valve springs so we've seen the flywheel we've seen the valve train now real quick i want to talk about who is this going to be marketed towards and again, like I said in the first of the video, this is a race car engine. This is what this was designed around. It's not like this is not gonna work on a yard car or a mini bike, but this is designed to you know, meet uh, certain specifications to be a race car engine and maybe have a class for the ghost engine. So it's going after the Briggs 206. That's exactly who this is gonna look good to. If you're running a Briggs 206 on your race car right now, this might be a more viable option because it's gonna be cheaper than the Briggs model. Uh, now, if I was building an all-out drag mini bike or a super high-built mini bike, I would probably start with a 212 because what you're going to end up having is uh, my personal mini bike revs to about eight, nine thousand RPMs. So I would have had to remove the coil and put a billet flywheel and stuff. So this is depends on what you're going after. Depends on what engine you're going to buy. There's a lot of engines on the market. Uh, there's the Predator 212, the 224, the new Ghost 212. There's a Tillotson 212. What else is there out there? Tillotson 196. Uh, there used to be a Tillotson 212R. There's a bunch of different options, and it's really what flavor matches what you're trying to achieve in the long run. Um, so that's basically, we just want to say that this is a race card engine is what it's designed around. I'm interested to see, because it does say a T6 squeeze casted rod. And so that means the rod is a little bit beefed up. I don't think it has insert bearings like a billet rod would, but <clears throat> we're gonna pull the side cover real quick and see what that rod looks like. So I'm gonna lean this back a little bit because there's always a little bit of oil in these blocks. That's the first engine I've seen from Harbor Freight have blue Loctite on the bolts, which makes sense because again, this is made to run four to 6,000 RPMs constant on a racetrack. So you definitely don't want a side cover bolt loosen up. So these are blue Loctited uh, from factory. Try not, I'm trying my best to not rip the side cover gasket, but again, this should be the normal. It's gonna rip for sure. It's gonna be a normal 212, like Hemi side cover gasket. Ooh, that side cover is on there. Maybe they blue locked out of that too. <laughs> blue locked out of the side cover on. 
yeah so another thing is your side cover gasket is probably going to rip if you pull it apart so might as well have some extra parts handy and we are going to link down everything we know that will fit on this engine like side cover gasket billet rod billet flywheel everything is going to be linked in the video's description uh, we also have like the billet side covers that we run so make sure to look at that if you're interested in building one of these so to me the rod looks like a standard rod but maybe it's beefed up but it looks like a normal normal rod so nothing crazy going on in there everything's pretty much you know your standard what you'd expect to see so now that we've discussed it looked over it talked about it now it's time to put her to the test and what's awesome is this is digitally governored so that means if we don't have a pulley on it or if we hit 6,000 rpms it's going to do the you know rev limit sputter the boogie so that's pretty exciting so when we first put it on the bike we're not going to have a pulley on it or nothing we're just going to rev the dale out of it right off the bat also if you're not using a centrifugal clutch or like in the racing cart world you're going to be using a clutch like a triple disc race clutch we have those linked down below all the parts that fit this all the upgrade parts stuff like that will be linked in the video description and those do help us out also we have our favorite juggernaut pulley this is go power sports 30 series juggernaut this will allow you to rev up to 9,000 rpms the standard cvt pulleys for 30 series will not allow you to do that so if you was a slap on just your standard run of the mill 30 series on this you'd only get about 5,000 ish rpms out of it so we highly recommend in a cvt application to run this juggernaut pulley let's get it put on the bike one-handed install yep Jeepers, mister. I've been working out. I put three to 12 spoonfuls of slot in my mouth. <laughs> hey, good idea to put oil in it. <laughs> it's going to use a half quart of oil and we're going to use the old top fill. We're going to be using synthetic and this already has our high zinc Lucas added to it. So, what we can do is open one of the side fills and when the oil is almost about to pour out this side fill we know we're full oh look at that a little stainless screen to filter the oil you're going to be putting in there you have to go higher than that i'm too short for this there's one downside to that screen she's going to take a while okay what we're going to do is we're not going to use a top fill it's going to take too long Ain't nobody got time for that. We're trying to hit rev limiters. <laughs> I'm going to tilt it forward. Just like so. I'm going to get it to about a half a quart. Oh wow, that's nice. So we'll get everything hooked up. And run her, baby. So just a reminder, it does not come with an exhaust. So we're using this Go Power Sports Super Pipe. If you have an MB200, it fits perfect. It utilizes another support right here. And we had this ceramic coated when we did the 224 build. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. We built the 224, which we just pulled off that's sitting right there, to around a 20 horsepower engine. I'll tell you, it was a screamer. So I'm gonna pull the juggernaut off of it while we do a, a little rev, just so if we was to leave it, of course the bike would take off. And if we just pull the belt, it can damage your pulley, letting them bells close because it lets it overextend. So don't put a pulley on your engine and just rev the tail out of it with no belt. Take it from me, don't do it. Gas is on. That's on. This is on. Got oil in it.
that's a good break-in cycle. There's flames coming out the back. <laughs> yeah. So now let's uh, throw the pulley on it. See what she'll do. The rev limiter is always cool. <laughs> you know, having a rev limiter. Because normally your rev limiter is a valve float. So it'd be cool if they came out with a coil where you could adjust your rev limiter. Like turn it up all the way to 10. That'd be crazy. Get on that. Go power sports. Come out with that. That'd be sick. thoughts is it does feel like a good like staged up stock engine that's what it feels like to me like if you was to take first impressions did a good burnout i like the rev limiter i haven't hit it so far it was bad and the box like oh <laughs> so you gotta think we went from a 20 horsepower 224 build off of this so i knew it would be a little bit underwhelming because we went from mega expensive build to uh box stock racing engine pretty much but so it does feel like I heard Hogfoot Larry in a minute. He got that old Stang running. So <laughs> it feels like is if you took a Predator or Tiltson and put took the Governor out. Cam? I don't know if I, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I'd say the cam's not aggressively, you know, like it's not aggressive cam. It can't be uh, at the price point and stuff, but runs good. I can smell the new. We're gonna break it in hard <laughs> and. Uh, Cause why not? Cause that's what people are gonna do. They're gonna buy it, run the dog out of it. I wish I could hit rev limiter across the field, but I'm just too big. Lonnie will be here in the morning. He's only 140 pounds, so we'll see what it'll do with him on. Come on. So you've seen us unbox it, talk about it, and uh, hit the old rev limiter. So we want to know in the comment section below what's your opinion on this engine. Would you buy this engine if you was in the market for a new engine? I know it's the new flavor of the month. Everybody wants it because it's new and they want to be the first one to get it. But at the end of the day, once the dust settles, would you guys buy this over a 212, over a 224, over the 225? Uh, what engine would you buy? Uh, I'm real curious to see. Um, it did feel like you basically took a 212, put valve springs in it, and removed the governor. I don't think it feels like it has like a super hot cam in it. A Mod 2 cam would feel a little bit more aggressive, but we have to see. You know, I'm sure the Briggs 206 doesn't feel insanely above a stock Briggs without a governor. Uh, but you can tell a big power difference, I mean, from a box, you know, stock engine. Um, one thing, we was going to do top speed run and let Lonnie ride it, and it has literally been raining since 2 a.m., hard so we're gonna do another video later on top we're gonna compare it to a bone stock 212 just to show you guys the difference uh, and again we already know we've done these things a thousand times and it's kind of a little underwhelming because we went from a 20 horsepower 224 like every part you could throw at it to this engine so it's really hard to uh, you know like be super excited when you pull 20 horsepower off something uh, but we will be doing a top speed run and uh, letting Lonnie feel it because he hasn't got to ride it yet and see what he thinks about it. So stay tuned for that. We also will be fully building this engine like the 224. Then we're going to put them to the test. We're going to do a little bit different build on this engine, a more high RPM build. And uh, we'll see which one uh, will fight to the death. So 
Make sure to check out those links in our video description on all the performance parts and stock parts that fit this engine. Those do help us continue to do these videos. We thank you guys for watching our videos and uh, checking out our content on these new engines. So we hope you enjoyed it. Let us know down below what engine you want. Uh, we love you guys and God bless.